49ers general manager John Lynch was enshrined into the Pro Football Hall of Fame over the weekend, prompting the Niners to tweet out this picture congratulating Lynch. So let's do the same here on the Niners Report. Like this video to congratulate Lynch for being one of the best safeties of all time. It is the 49ers report right here on Chat Sports. I am your host, Chase Sr. 49ers general manager got into the Pro Football Hall of Fame because he was a ball hawking safety. If you want to hawk down your ball hairs, you can do so with Manscaped and get 20% off and free shipping at checkout by going to manscaped.com slash 49ers. That link is in the description as well as the comment section of this video. Let's dive into the latest 49ers news and rumors because training camp is in full swing and there is a lot to talk about on today's show. We start with this. Is Nick Bosa coming off that torn ACL going to play week one? I'm pumping the brakes just a bit on this and I'm giving it to Shanna Hats in part because I don't think the Niners really need Nick Bosa to play week one or week two. Let's get into it. So Niners have been very conservative with Nick Bosa so far in training camp, as they should be because this guy is an all-world talent coming off the edge, terrorizing opposing quarterbacks. But Kyle Shanahan did say on Sunday after practice that Nick Bosa is on track to play week one, and that is the plan as of right now. He suffered that torn ACL in week two against the Jets in the Meadowlands last year. So we're not quite at the one-year mark, but given all of the advances being made with ACL surgeries, it's totally possible for Bosa to be on the field when the Niners kick off the season against the Detroit Lions in week one. Here's what Shanahan had to say about his phenomenal edge run going into year three. I believe so in terms of Nick Bosa coming back. That's the plan all along. There's been no setbacks. He's doing great right now. And he's taking part in some light drills. He's going up against the shed. Uh, and he's doing some things on the side to kind of come back from that ACL injury. I will say this about Bosa, though. And this is why I don't think that he might not play week one and why I don't think he has to play week two either. You don't want to rush Nick Bosa back. This guy is an all-pro caliber player. He really shined in year one as a rookie when he compiled nine sacks on that team that made it to the Super Bowl. I don't want to rush him back for the possibility of him further injuring that ACL because, yes, there have been medical advances made when it comes to ACL injuries, right? But this is a, uh, an injury that you really don't want to take for granted, and you do want to take it seriously. And I don't think going up against the Lions or going up against the Eagles in week one as well as week two that you need Nick Bosa on the field. This is a Niners team that is talented. It's deep. This defensive front can be absolutely ferocious, and I think the Niners should get off to a 2-0 and start in the regular season. So don't rush Nick Bosa back. He's coming off that torn ACL. You need this guy. And in year one, as a rookie two years ago, this guy was spectacular. You take a look at his pro football focus grades, overall grade of 86.7, run defense 77 and a half, pass rush 81 and a half. I think this year he can be a double digit sack guy. And if he's able to stay on the field and healthy, he is going to secure the bag just like Fred Warner. So do you think Nick Bosa uh, is going to come back, and if so, which week will he come back? Leave your week number in the comment section down below. Week one, week two, week three. Predict when Nick Bosa will come back this season. Talanoa Hufonga, fifth round pick out of USC, getting first team reps. Is he going to be the starter? One Shanna had. I think we have to chill just a little bit with Talanoa Hufonga. I'm high on the rookie because I do think he's going to make the 53-man roster. I do think he's going to get snaps defensively and special teams early on, but is it going to be the starter? No. Jimmy Ward was resting yesterday in practice. That's why Hufonga got some of those first-team reps. Now, a lot of people are excited about it, and they should be because Hufonga is impressing everybody so far in training camp, and he was used in single high looks as well as a box safety. I like his versatility there, and he's getting some positive reviews for being a fifth-round pick, and I think he's going to get snaps early on in the season, as I mentioned, but him as a starter, let's pump the brakes just a bit. Here's what Kyle Shanahan had to say about Talanoa Hufonga, though. He loves to run around and loves to act like Troy Palamalu out there, who also got inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Still got a ways to go before he's a Hall of Famer, but he's done a good job 
we enjoy his presence out there. And there is the Polynesian connection between Palomalu as well as Talano Hufonga. They both have the hair that comes out of the helmet, and when they're going sideline to sideline wreaking havoc on the football field and you see that curly hair kind of just popping around, reminds you a little bit of Troy Palomalu. I'm not going to compare the player of Hufonga to Palomalu, but there are some connections there, and they do have a similar skill set. Palomalu, never the most athletic safety, but he was very smart, and he was able to dissect plays before they even happen. Hufonga has brought some of that to the table with the Niners, as well as during his days at USC. I do think Hufonga makes the 53-man roster. I said that in my 53-man roster projection that came out over the weekend. I said it in my first roster projection back in May. This guy can play safety. He can play a little bit of hybrid linebacker. He can contribute on special teams and a rookie fifth round pick to be able to contribute in a variety of ways. I think that helps his chances of making the 53 man roster and he brings all of those character intangibles to the table as well. What do you think though? Will Hugh Fonga make the final 53? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Be sure to get those votes in in the comment section down below and predict if Hugh Fonga is going to be on this roster on opening day. John Lynch has a safety, Troy, Palamu has a, Troy Palamalu has a safety, excuse me. Some might say those guys were the perfect package, and you can get the perfect package from Manscaped if you go to manscaped.com slash 49ers. The good thing is at checkout, you get 20% off and free shipping. Here's the thing about the perfect package. The boxer briefs on your screen right now, I wear them all the time. They're honestly the most comfortable boxer briefs that I've ever worn. I like to go on runs a lot, and... You know, my balls don't flop around because those boxer briefs are able, able to keep everything intact. You also get the ball toner, the ball deodorant, and the brand new lawnmower 4.0, which you can use downstairs as well as on your chest, your back, your beard, your hair. 20% off and free shipping on the best men's grooming products. The same men's grooming products that your 49ers use. I'm going to put this link in the description as well as the comment section of this video so that you're able to get this deal as well so you can be a ball hawk just like John Lynch was during his playing days. Some Trey Lance buzz we have to get to. Is he cooling off a bit in training camp? Two Shanna hats here. Lance was red hot at the start of the week last week. Only one incompletion over Tuesday and Wednesday. He was tearing it up. Throwing balls and completing them at all three levels. Displaying an unbelievable deep arm as well as his accuracy and mobility. And Jimmy Garoppolo has had a really solid training camp. Let's not... Uh, forget about that because Garoppolo has been good, not great so far. But on Thursday as well as Saturday and Sunday, Trey Lance started to cool off just a tad. And that's the consensus coming from some of his coaches as well as some of the players. But the compliments do continue to pile in for Trey Lance. And there's this that we know as of right now. Whether it's as the starter or coming in in run packages, Trey Lance is going to play in some capacity throughout this upcoming 2021 season. I mean, Kyle Shanahan has said as much, and he said as much over the weekend saying this. Trey is going to play for us this year. I know you guys are all running to Twitter with that, but situationally, he's going to get plays. That doesn't mean he's going to be the starter or anything. He's going to get plays. You have to prepare him for that in every way possible. Trey will get reps with the ones that doesn't mean the competition is open. It just means I want him to get some reps with the number one offensive line. couple reasons for that. If they do start to introduce and implement more running plays for Trey Lance, in order to get that timing down, as well as the switches and the movement of that offensive line, you want Trey, with his snap count and those running plays, to be on the field with that first team offensive line. But also, this is kind of covering up for Kyle Shanahan if Trey Lance continues to ball out and he takes over for Jimmy G because he needs to start getting those reps with that future offensive line that he might be a part of with that first team unit. At the end of the day, here's the situation with the Niners, Lance, Kyle Shanahan, and Jimmy Garoppolo. The 49ers are sitting pretty right now. If Trey Lance is ready to play, he should probably play from week one. If Jimmy Garoppolo kind of beats him out in training camp as well as the preseason. You play Jimmy G because he certainly has ability and he helped lead this team to the Super Bowl two years ago. But if Jimmy G is playing well and Trey Lance is also playing well, you can continue to hype up 
the leverage and the value of Jimmy G, G, Jimmy G in order to trade him away to a quarterback needy team. Tim Kawakami of The Athletic, certainly complimentary of what Lance has been able to do so far because Lance has been turning heads over the last week and change. Through the first week and a half of training camp, Lance has been immensely impressive. He's fast and large. He throws lasers like his elite fastball down the left sideline to Brandon Ayuk in a drill on Saturday. When Lance gets outside and plants his foot to either throw it or make a cut upfield, it does not appear that defenders are all too likely or willing to stop him. But Garoppolo is out there too. Garoppolo has gotten all but one first team snap so far this camp. Garoppolo is, as of this moment, still the quarterback who gives the 49ers the best chance to win. That's according to Shanahan earlier this week. I'll move Garoppolo's odds to start week one to 70% up from 65% on Friday. Now everybody is noticing the talent of Lance. D'Amico Ryan saying, his athletic ability, his running ability, poses a different threat that we really haven't seen. Kyle Shanahan has been very complimentary of how he's mastered the playbook and displayed his dual threat abilities. And the media watching practice just knows that the raw skill set, the raw talent and ability of Lance, much better than Garoppolo. That's why I think it's only a matter of time before Lance becomes your starter. And again, if he's ready to start from week one, I do think it's smart and wise for him to start on opening day. Trent Williams, another guy who's kind of noticed the stupid talent and ability of Lance saying this, just go down the line. You look at his size. He's a little bit bigger than a prototypical quarterback. You look at his athleticism, obviously. We know he has the edge there over your conventional quarterback, but then he can also do all the things a conventional quarterback is supposed to do. You know, you don't see those come around too much. Here's the main quote. He's a blue chipper and you could see it from day one. And that's been the common theme here, is that everybody's been able to see Lance's talent on display from day one. And that's from an arm talent standpoint, that's from a size standpoint, and him taking off running with the football. Also, an intangible point of view as well. This guy's mature, he's a good leader, he's got this silent assassin-like kind of feel to him, and he goes about his work in a very veteran-like way. Very impressive coming from a rookie. So Tim Kawakami and what Trent Williams had to say makes me pose this question. What's the best long-term option for the Niners at quarterback going into 2021? Type JG for Jimmy G. Type TL for Trey Lance. Be sure to get those votes in in the comment section down below. Niner gang, 49ers report, been picking up a lot of momentum just like this quarterback competition in Santa Clara. So that is why you should, subscri you should subscribe to the 49ers report by Chat Sports. YouTube.com slash 49ers TV or hit that red subscribe button down below. What do we do here? We bring you the latest 49ers news and rumors, live shows every single Thursday. Anything that happens with the Niner gang, we have you covered. So annihilate that subscribe button down below.